All right, so the next uh, program that we're gonna see, how does it tick, is going to be Blaine Sumner's Vanilla Gorilla program as it's outlined in Guerrilla Warfare. Um, you could buy this book off of Juggernaut Training Systems for 37 bucks. And considering um, the quality of the stuff that they re release sometimes, this is actually better put together. And it's by Blaine Sumner, who's a really successful uh, equipped and raw lifter. And he does do a lot of like data-oriented stuff once you look at relative volume, average intensity, and stuff like this. And it's really, really interesting. Um, but in any case, um, th the way the program is set up is you'll normally have um, high intent or high priority, low priority type work, and you'll you'll see that it is basically concurrent training. It is you're doing a high high intensity movement than the lower intensity movement. So you're training basically all qualities at the same time. However, it does have a generally linear approach in terms of progress. Um, for this exact program, I have not divided it by priorities of lifts, but I have maintained that thousand pound total just because, or sorry, I have normalized the total. So you'll get normalized in um, tonnage, um, which essentially means that rather than doing weight times reps to get tonnage, you'll get percent times rep for tonnage. So, right off the bat, look at how clean this looks. You could see that the, the number of reps gradually reduces, that the intensity gradually rises, relative intensity gradually rises. That's very linear in its approach. And if you look at it from a, from a tonnage point of view, you see the same thing, a gradual drop-off in tonnage. Once you include accessories, same thing. Number of sets is actually pretty flat. But this looks like a clear cookie cutter example of like, yep, I could tell exactly what that is. And you'll probably think this is linear periodization. It's not. It's not. Um, I mean, it is linear, but it's not linear block periodized type training. It is concurrent training. You'll have, and you'll see here, like the way this is divvied up on weeks one to four, you're seeing a good amount of that priority one stuff that's in the 80. 85 to 90 percent range and then you see as as the session goes on you also have like this 80 to 85 and then below 70 percent 1rm type stuff and the way this is prescribed is you'll it, it it's set up in a way that it could be hybrid you can either use rp or you can use percents he'll tell you like okay this is how many reps you're supposed to hit and this is what percentage it corresponds to but generally, you just want to get in the ballpark of this many reps left in the tank once you, complete, once you complete the reps and just go from there. And that's really useful because, I mean, you, you have that versatility. But also, if you want to do a run-in program or you want to learn RPE, I think this is a really good program to do it on. That's not, he's not orthodox RPE, but that is how he worked on it. Um, and you could tell just by how the intensity is dis is distributed is that you have your priority one, priority two, priority three, and each one has an intensity bump as you go on. Like everything bumps up by 5% as time goes on until in the end, all you're left with is work that's in the 85 and up range. So even the stuff that is your typically high rep work, once you get to the end, it's only high rep because it's more than singles. You know what I mean? Like, so it is not block periodization, but it is very linear. And, you know, because he's actually thinking about this from RP, RPE perspective, saying this many reps away from failure, that's why he has such smooth transitions in that relative intensity. Now, in terms of the number of sets, it gradually increases but then drops off for some fatigue dissipation in week 11. Week 12 isn't included. Um, week 12 is just like peak week. And I think it's just like do your openers. So 
Another thing worth considering is that acute chronic workload ratio. So does a acute chronic workload ratio fall within good guidelines? So 0.8 to uh, 1.3 is a sweet spot for most developmental zones. Um, that is where you have the least amount of risk. And then um, below 0.5, I believe, is where you have the, an increased risk. And above 1.5 is where you have increased risk. Um, below 0.5, I believe, is like a detraining zone, which puts you at more risk, generally speaking. But you're going to get into that zone once you start peaking anyways. And that's kind of what you see is you see once you get into week 11, you're at about 0.68, which is still good. Now, for this, we've assumed, again, like always, that there has been zero progress in any of the lifts. You know, just for ease of understanding the program. So generally, you're not seeing any change in any of the estimated 1RMs. But if you look at, look at the squat intensity or the intensity distribution graphs, they make perfect sense. And you could see what type of program it is by that. In terms of the number of sets, you see a decent amount. In your squats, you're seeing 11. It's dead even squat to a deadlift. And bench press, you're seeing about 20. And for me, that's a good amount of sets. That's what I like to see. And when it comes to actually doing all of them, you do deadlift um, at least twice a week. You squat, I believe, four times a week and bench press every single day. And that's good. That's a good way to do it. Um, in terms of acute chronic workload ratio, uh, we already normalized it, so this right here at the bottom is not worth taking into consideration. Um, I would look at the ACWR total, um, and it looks pretty good. Everything across the board is good. Once you get into the stress index, you can see this week here, or sorry, this week here is a little high, but that's really right on the border, and that's week nine, so... That's acceptable in my book. Um, I would be okay with that. But in any case, this is what it looks like. And it is one of the cleanest looking programs I've seen. So the three criteria, the, the only criteria that matters for any program is, is it ordered safely? Yes, I, I would say it's ordered safely because even though you are doing a mix of high intensity, low intensity work, you are doing the highest intensity work at the beginning, and that's the way you should order it. The stuff that is easy to screw up, put that first. Um, and he describes it exactly that way. It's high priority. So priority one, first in the list. Makes perfect sense. Um, and then there's adherence. Um, and with adherence, does it make sense? Is it easy to follow? And I'd say yes, it's very, very easy to follow. There's and it's very well explained, and I understood it even when I heard it secondhand. Um, and then just looking at it, it made perfect sense. Uh, to tell you the truth, I haven't even read all of the book. I just went straight to the program, plugged in the program, and then once I saw what the program looked like, I was like, oh, this is really easy to input. This makes a lot of sense. And then I started reading the book. The program sold me on the book. Um, and then there's outcomes. Um, I, have, I haven't run this, to tell you the truth. However, I do run a lot of programs like this, where it is a lot of high-frequency stuff, and it is a lot of mixed-mode, concurrent-style training. And that is something that I like. Um, it works for me. Um, and However, it tends to be on, I guess, lower volume, because there is no like super dedicated hypertrophy work. Um, it's always parsed out. But I would say that's acceptable since you're training all three qualities at the same time, so you can't have the same expectations in terms of volume. So you do get a good amount of volume, you do get a good amount of intensity, so I think it's good. And I have had a friend who's run this before, and he, he liked it, and he had a lot of success with it. However, I think it's very clean looking, and it makes perfect sense the way he does everything. And I think that is probably the best selling point of this. It is stupid simple, and I like it. Um, so that's what makes this program tick, and uh, 
Thanks for watching.